All right, so we're going to call to order the Capital Improvement Board <laughs> meeting at 5:35 on Tuesday, September 12th. Uh, Sarah, or, oh my God, uh -oh. Christina, could you call the roll? I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is year five. Let me just start by saying this is year five. She's off. Yep. Out. Mr. Out. <laughs> off with my head. <laughs> Mr. Blust. Yeah. Mr. Patel. Yes. Ms. Price. Here. Ms. Shipley. Here. <laughs> okay, we're going to swear in Sharon now. So if we come down, please. This is Shannon. Yeah. Say Andrew. Thank you. Do we have any audience participation? None tonight. Uh, I think the next step is to the, approve the minutes from the 829 meeting. That's the, is that the revision? The, the September 5th is the revision. Oh, the September 5th is a revision. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have August 29th, 2023 and September 5th, 2023. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve from John. I second it. Shelley seconds. Can we call the roll? Mm -hmm. Mr. Bless? Yes. Ms. Price? Yes. Ms. Shipley? Yes. Those minutes are approved. So now we'll move on to our department head presentations. Uh, we'll start with building with Keith. So before Keith starts, I'll just give a little bit of background. Um, Last week we went over uh, the majority of the items that come out of the capital fund 820, um, the service department and land and development, which are Amy Moore's projects. So tonight uh, we will focus on building, uh, parks and recreation, and information technology, uh, which are the only other requests out of 820. And then we have two separate funds, uh, the fitness center fund and the golf maintenance for Glen Eagles, which operate as enterprise funds, so they are separate from those have and they have their own capital components so I will turn it over to Keith thank you Christina hello everyone good evening good evening hello. thanks for hearing me out and my request for a slight budget increase um, the building department hasn't really increased their budget much other than cost of living over the last uh, few years since I've been here um, we are asking for some capital outlay this year uh, one larger piece of equipment we would need is a newer copier machine uh, ours is currently eight years old uh, I think the IT department may go into a little bit more detail as far as the uh, costs and purchases associated with that um, we also are looking to get another vehicle uh, currently, the department has four vehicles. Our current most recent vehicles, a 2015, we have two 2011s, and a 2013. Um, I'm thinking at this point, the way our department is changing and the city is sort of changing as far as there's not a high volume of new permits, we're doing more property maintenance, that we probably will need a more fixed three vehicles as opposed to four. Uh, for the department i think that would probably uh, work for us for the next five years uh, we have uh, looked at vehicles and obviously new vehicle costs projected is around sixty thousand dollars so that's kind of where those numbers came from because uh, we probably need something that's a little bit more robust than a car 
something that has all-wheel drive because we do occasionally go off pavement. Um, other annual changes include some miscellaneous contractual accounts, um, a slight increase uh, from 5,500 to 2,000, I'm sorry, a slight decrease from 9,000 to 5,500 on our property maintenance because our property maintenance program, we've been able to stay ahead of a lot of the high grass complaints that we get. So we use contractors, we're much more efficient, and I think that number would work for us. Uh, so I've tried to pull out money where I could. Um, overall, uh, we're also anticipating some involvement, hopefully, with municipal court uh, for some of the cases we're bringing forward. We're currently working with the new prosecutor and law director and the mayor to try and uh, get some of these to move forward so that we can actually, actually uh, process cases into court so that they... Uh, get closure in that response. Uh, so I'm anticipating there could be some costs involved with that. And I think I set aside $35,000 for potential litigation or other court actions. Um, I guess the numbers on the big side or the macro side of it, our last year's budget was at $574,145. Um, with an increase that I'm asking for this year of $78,233, uh, which would give us a total budget for 2024 of $652,378. Um, that I think is a, a pretty reasonable increase. We tried to stick to cost of living at about 4% and some uh, other nominal changes, but that in a nutshell is it. Um, I guess as far as the vehicles, because that is a big uh, purchase, I do also have some uh, support from Fred Bissell, who's the service department mechanic, who's also done a lot of work on these vehicles. And we've had to start investing more money each time we go into service with these vehicles that we currently have. So uh, hopefully that would help in the long run to reduce overall cost. Thank you. That's about all I have. So we're just going to vote on the two items, the copier and the vehicle. Correct. Okay. <laughs> and then we have four today, but we'll go to three. So we would eliminate one. Is that the plan or? Uh, yeah, that's the overall plan is to have four. But we're going to reduce down to three total vehicles. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. Mayor. Keith, your budget of 60000 on that vehicle? Yes. What kind of vehicle is that? Uh, it would probably be a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive vehicle. I think when we were looking, uh, I started looking last year, some of those vehicles like uh, four-wheel drive, I want to say uh, at the same time the police department was looking was an expedition. So that might be the full-size four-wheel drive. Uh, there are some in the lower budget, but I think what was happening, we were starting to see very limited outlay of cars in the uh, contractual state bids so we didn't know what number to put in so that's what we used I just I, you know I think we should talk about what you're gonna do with that size vehicle though I, I mean you know we just got an administrative car and that car was 34,000 mm -hmm. and it's a it's a SUV small SUV it's a Ford it was on the purchasing program um, and you know I, I don't know I, we need to talk about that. I just want to know what we're going to sure, do with such yeah. a larger vehicle. I mean, I looked at also, I looked at the Explorers that the police department got. And, yeah, they had one uh, that was used, actually. It was a beautiful car. It was in really nice shape. But it was way over budget. I just, you know, I couldn't see spending that kind of money. Plus, you know, we had the grant for the one the administration just got, too. So that car only cost us $4,000. I mean, we, everything, the rest of it was all paid by NOPEC. So... Um, yeah, at the 60,000 I think is steep, but let's discuss that. Yeah, I'm happy to explore it. I think uh, some of those smaller, as you said, like escapes and some of the hybrids, they're in the 40s range, 45. Again, I mean, whether it's a lease or whether it's a purchase used, either way, I mean, I think I'm just trying to establish a number to get another mm -hmm. vehicle in there that's within the last couple of years for us, that'll last five years. 
And then one other thing, and I really probably does is not directed at you. I know this is coming from IT, but these copiers, you know, we're buying copiers for every department. We're buy we got three copiers on budgets this year, totaling probably close to $30,000. And I'm not convinced we need to buy copiers. I need to talk to probably Don and Zach to find out why, but I, I just, I'm not sold on that at all. We used to lease them. Yeah, I think it's, I just think it's, ridiculous that we're spending ten thousand dollars on a copier and i know parks and rec has asked for one now and so did uh service so you know we've got a lot of you know why we're buying copiers i i don't get it that's not real really where i want to go but we'll discuss that i guess tomorrow don if you you and zach come in and let's talk about that okay thank you yeah, I mean, as far as the, the details of the purchase, I agree. I know when I first came here, I was sort of shocked to find that we had a service agreement that cost us per page, as well as the agreement for the copier, which I thought was a little skewed, but not in the sense that it was wrong, but it was just seemed like that was a different contract than I was used to. Normally, I've seen leases for these things that go for so many years, and then they get replaced because your cost average, I think, comes out about the same. But again, I, I would leave that up to finance and IT to, to determine those details. And the only reason I bring it up here is because, just to let you guys know, that those numbers may change, possibly, after we have our discussion. So. Or can we leverage to, if yeah. we're buying three independently, is mm -hmm. that? Yeah, some, some, something like that. Yeah. Do we have anybody who's um, doing market analysis of the numbers What's the specifications? What's options out there? What's cheaper? On copiers? Oh, yeah, on these machines. I don't know. That's that would be IT's thing. I'm not sure. Anybody but, just doing the numbers or comparison? Like, okay, if we get this specification, it says ten thousand. If we get just a little lower specification, it could cost up to six thousand. Uh, because I know the copiers runs on the speeds and those high tech, you know, small things that say. Right. A lot of those copiers have ancillary functions, whether it's stapling, sorting, yeah. color, et cetera. We did, in fact, uh, Danielle Waits, my administrative Echo assistant, did go through somewhat of a comparative. I think we looked at the functions that we needed. Uh, unfortunately, with the building department. So we process a lot of paperwork for other boards. We do need some of those ancillary oh, yeah. functions. But I think we were trying to find the, the most cost effective unit that would suit our needs. And I think that's kind of what we're coming up with based on past costs as well. The whole goal was not saying, okay, let's compromise the quality. Of course, you get the best, whatever that works for you, you know, time saving, cost effective, all that. That's great. We want to get that. The only thing is that. As a city, if one person's going out to do the shopping, as a city, I believe we can definitely get a good rate than every other guy on the street could possibly get it. Because the, the relationship we're gonna have with that company, it's gonna be very long term. So I think we should get the best price out there. Well, you know, Zach like, is here from IT. If you don't mind, let him come sure, up for yeah. a second. He, I, he could have come on up and Zach. let him talk. Yeah, let him, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking you off the hook, Keith, is what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry, so um, the reason why we are looking at buying opposed to leasing is because the lease is actually one and a half. It's uh, significantly more than if you actually were going to just buy it out. Right. So buying is actually the better uh, way to go in this kind of scenario. So Keith's printer is from 2015. Um, it's eight years old. So as the printer ages, it's getting harder and harder to find the, the parts to replace it. So um, for the most part, me and Don, we go with uh, um, Comdoc. It's a local company here, uh, just outside of Canton, and um, they give us very good rates always. Um, now, based on like the usage, like Keith is saying, you do pay quarterly for what you do use. Um, but when you buy a new copier, you have like the lowest rates, and then after, let's say, let's like Keith was saying, after five years, we should start looking at getting a new copier because usually that's usually around the end of life term. But um, it does fluctuate based on the department use. I mean. Um, a gen had a copier that was going for about 10 years and it just we just replaced it last year, well this year so it just depends it, it uh, there's not a one size fits all type deal no but, I, and yeah. um, my, yeah. I'm sorry I don't mean to the goal was just that as a city yeah. I think we should negotiate the best a lot there oh no and uh, we are getting the best prices that we can okay. I mean really that, I mean that, so that's yeah. the whole thing you know absolutely that's about it. no that's fine uh, I didn't want to belabor the conversation but you're up oh. here now so it's yeah, like that's great. you know explain to me why you know purchasing it 
and then you said they're usually last about you know they start coming up falling apart five, five years. seven years so my thought is to lease it for three years you typically that's a lease and then right. now they're still they should still be under warranty and you're shaking your head no they're not no, a three-year no, no, lease no, we what's would, the we, five years. yeah okay so five years but then, then then we get rid of it and we get a new copier you know, instead of hanging on to it when it's in its last that, uh, days. That's why I lease my cars because, you know, right. I'm not a mechanic. So I'd rather yeah. just lease the car three years and it's out of here. Let somebody else yeah. have the troubles. I get a brand new car. Right. No, Don and I, we actually did the uh, numbers on that. And um, for, I think it was services, actually, believe it or not. It was actually, you run the numbers and let's say the copier, I think it was all in, was $8,400. If we leased it for five years, it would be just a little over 10000 so the idea was that if we buy it, we're not paying the full amount. Okay. It would it'd be a better well, let's cost. talk about it. No, we'll have to talk about it in depth. Cause... No, absolutely. No, it's not a problem. Um, Christine, you just want me to stay up here then? Sure. Okay. Well, did anyone have any other yeah. questions for building? No, I just wanted to add a point to that. So I, if I'm not wrong, Go ahead. the leasing charge is based on the usage of the printings we do, right? No. So No? Okay, so it's a fixed price. It's yeah. not based on the usage at all. Okay. The maintenance is based on usage. Okay. The maintenance, they charge you on, on top of the leasing. You don't pay for any consumables except for paper. All the toners included, all the staples, all the, all the consumables are included. And then we maintenance is what we pay on top of the leasing amount. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And including all of that together, it's little or $10,000. Yeah. yeah, if we were going to do the five years, yeah. Okay, so including the paper toner on everything is little over 10. Yeah. Over here, the machine eight. itself is only ten. Buying buying the copier would be eight thousand, and then based on maintenance. So that's what the ten included. It's all that as well. Yeah. The supply is already included. Yeah. In the yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they rounded the number to ten. No, of course. Yeah. I, I correct. Mean, okay. Correct. No, you're. But fine. I think they're going to take another look. So. Oh, no, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Sorry. Okay. So. Thank you, Keith. By the way, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So. Sorry, I just have a hand up. Everybody. No, because they really have that's right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. So, normally, what I've done in the last couple meetings is give you just a little bit of historical spending that I, whatever department it has been, has done um, over the last five years. IT really does not have a historical um, value. There is one carryover payment. Mm -hmm. Um, that's pre-committed. Um, I did not include it on the slide. It is in the um, little Excel portion. It's year three of three for access control system upgrade. It's 108,000. That'll be the last year of that payment. And, and other than that, there really is not a historical uh, five-year look back for IT because they haven't had any requests. <laughs> um, no, thank you, Christina. That was perfect. Um, Hello, good evening, Capital Improvement Board, Mayor Scafidi. So uh, the reason why we're here today is we are going to be upgrading the city servers for the city of Twinsburg. And the servers that we're running are about eight years old. Um, they are approaching end of life, so we're looking at new servers for 2024. Um, the last time we performed this major upgrade was in 2015. I actually started in 2016, so when I got here, everything was new. Now we're getting to that point where the operating system is, um, we can't update it anymore, we have to get brand new hardware go from there um, so to get eight years out of life out of a server is like very exceptionally great um, but this so anyways um if you have your pamphlets um, so we currently have three servers currently so if you go to page two if you flip on the back um, we're actually going to go to a two server system and these two servers are actually better than the three we have in line currently so that's the reason why with that um, so, and then the last point of this would be on page three, our police department. Um, they currently have one server, and then from page four on the, on the back, we're gonna go to a two server system for redundancy purposes and, and just fail over. Um, I know I covered a lot right there, so um, do you guys have any questions? I mean, normally, typically, like anything computer hardware related is about five years, typically. Um, Don and Mark and myself have done uh, exceptionally well getting eight years of life out of a um, capital improvement project from 2015, so we've been very happy with that. Um, that's really, that's all we got. <laughs> Is this for just the servers alone, or the s servers and the switches? Well, it would, so the the switches come along with it. I'm just that was just a graphical representation, um, but no, it's just servers alone. Yeah. 
the servers alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, Don, do you want me to say anything else further? I think, yeah. <laughs> Is this an outside company or is this? We, uh, we have a managed um, MSP called AtNet Plus, and they actually got our quote together for us. Um, they looked at our architecture on what how we could improve ourselves. And um, yeah, they, uh, they've, we've been doing work with them since Don started in 2000. So you know, they have a, we have a very good working relationship with them. So the 120 covers? So the city of network as long as, long as, well, as well as this um, uh, police department network, network as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any service that comes with this, or it's just purchasing the service? It's just so. purchasing, yeah. Um, I think it's, the, I'm sure it's the Cisco uh, SmartNet in case of uh, any type of um, hardware issues. We would get support next day. Um, a lot of them are three hours because it's critical. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry, and then we got three, yeah, three years. Yeah, three year warranty no matter what. Yeah, yes, yes, Bill. Will the new servers make it more difficult for people to? Uh, hack or infiltrate our system. I mean, absolutely. I mean, when you're going to a uh, greater, what's it called, a more up-to-date operating system. I mean, we have other safeguards in place, of course. It's a layered approach, but that's the whole idea of you know updating and getting up-to-date operating systems that are 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 supported for those kind of reasons. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? Well, then everything good. Okay. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, and next, um, Mark Kutowski will talk about the uh, council chamber upgrade. Okay, uh, you guys don't see it so much there, but when you're sitting at the ends here, we have a hard time you know, seeing this screen here. And originally, when we put all the chairs in here, this is going to be a multi-purpose room. Mm -hmm. So um, what we'd like to do is right up, Basically above me is put two large TVs, one facing you, one facing out to the audience. We'd also like to put replace the t old TV on the, um, in the lobby. We'd like to use that for an overflow for school board meetings when we do them in here. Um, a lot of people outside because you can't fit, fit them in here. Um, so real quickly, there's three large televisions and they are the higher end of um, I want I want to say commercial, but they have redundant power supply, so they're made a little different for commercial. Um, she feels better. Uh, purposes, and they have a you know a shallower. You can see them at different angles a lot better than than you normally can. But the backbone of this is a four by four matrix system, which allows us to. It's the beginning of doing digital distribution of. <clears throat> anything we want across our city buildings because our buildings are connected through fiber. So with this network, we can bring a number of inputs in and we can send a different output to each of the TVs in here. We plan on using this room, the fire department, police department as an EOC, emergency operations uh, center. And the benefit of having those inputs is they can put, you know, news on one you know station they can on one uh, monitor they can use the other monitors for different purposes um so that's it i know this might look uh you know for three tvs but there's a lot behind it um to hang them and that network behind it that's really operating it so okay we good any questions no all right thank you thank sure. you All right, so next will be Jen Bettinson. She will first talk about parks and recreation and seniors, which comes out of the general capital improvement fund. And then after that will be fitness center, which is its own separate capital fund. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, um, so five year average is about 138 for our parks and rec and seniors combined. This year, that number is a little higher simply because we are adding the new playground program that we have started to put into place. Under um, Mayor Scafidi, we have decided that we need to evaluate all the, pro the playgrounds in the city and start a replace and repair program that has not been in place before. So um, you'll see on this list the East Idlewood Park. That will be the first, the second park. Sorry, Glen Chamberlain is actually the first this year. East Idlewood will be the second playground that will be completely torn down and replaced. Um, right now that cost is sitting at about 130000 So that's why that cost is elevated for our capital um, expenditures for 2024. Um, going to the Senior Center awning, right now that is sitting at about $41,000.
However, we are looking at Habitat for, for Humanity and two grant funding options to help us with, assist us with that. But that cost is coming in a little higher than we'd like it, so that's where we're at with that 41,000. Um, Laura is asking for a senior vehicle because our fusion is at 118,000 miles right now and it is showing wear. Fred Bissell, our fleet manager, has suggested that we look in 2024 at the similar hybrid vehicle that the mayor just got um, for our senior transportation program. That is not department, it is not for me to run around or Laura to run around, that is strictly for our senior transportation program. So that is sitting right now between 40 and 45. He suspects that we could potentially hold off till 25, but he really doesn't want to because we will be looking at the next in our fleet, which is going to be the van, which is our wheelchair lift, and that one's gonna be in the 90 to $100,000 range. Um, Keith, can we get you a senior vehicle? <laughs> They're only 45,000. He wants 60 grand. Sorry, Keith, I did not mean. I'm reading off of Fred's report. You're getting Swear. a senior vehicle. <laughs> did not mean to throw you under the bus. Um, the last thing on my list is the water park slide. So as the years go on, the coating on that wears. That gives us holes, the finish, and then it is not safe. Lasts about eight years. Our last finish was on 2015. We're still waiting for a cost, but right now we're projecting it around the $25,000 mark. Um, we've really tried to put items in our capital budget that are needs versus wants, and we've also tried to put things in there that we can go out for grant funding for. Um, I really try in my department to not get anything that I cannot attempt to grant for. So that's where we're at with parks and seniors. Anybody questions? What, Jen, what's a senior vehicle then? Like that would transport just a couple seniors? Right, right now our Fusion only can transport the driver and three other seniors. Okay. So basically it would be the same thing. Um, again, Fred is really trying to push us towards something similar to the small SUV that the mayor did just get. It is a hybrid. Um, Laura wants to look at it to see if it's something that our seniors can get up into, um, but that's what they're looking at. So, but he doesn't believe any more than 45,000 would be the expense on that. For the playgrounds, do you try to go with a similar configuration or does it just depend on the size of like the park that you're So placing? all of our playgrounds will have similar components. They will be similar colors and they will have similar components. That way it makes it easier for our service department to replace things. We can have one company that we're getting the parts from <clears> instead <throat> of looking at three or, different, three or four different parts. So with the playground program, we also have a our repair. So as we put in a playground, then the service department is tasked with budgeting for that repair five years down the road. Because we shouldn't have to repair anything unless there's a major breakage within that five years. But my department is trying not to put anything in that we are not going to take care of down the road. Sure. And all of those similar configurations do help us with our insurance. Um, one of the things that they did this year was they went around to every single park and playground and the, the gentleman drove around with Dennis from service and they look and they tell you like this one's out of date, like this is a problem and they have different ratings for playgrounds which you wouldn't think would be you know, high priority for a city but if we're taking control of them and we're repairing them, those are things that are important for us to you know, make sure that we're planning for. Because one of the things you have to remember is a lot of our playgrounds are in HOAs. So mm -hmm. we are taking care of those HOA playgrounds as well. So we want to make sure that they're in, within that neighborhood and, and can fall under the insurance specs as well. Do you know how many that are supported throughout the city? What, like what the total? I have 17 total. 17. Mm -hmm. We have a list, they're all rated, sorry Shelly, mm -hmm. they're all rated as to what their condition is, what their usage is, what their life expectancy is. The ones that you'll start seeing coming up as replacements are marked as obsolete, meaning when something breaks, I, there's nothing left to replace it. Okay. So. so this price, the 130, is for the Chamberlain one and East Idlewood. This is East Idlewood only. Only. Glen Chamberlain is being replaced with funds from an ODNR grant that we received. Okay. This year. This year. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we have to spend it by 24. So you'll start seeing the demolition of that park in the next few weeks, and that playground will go up in the, in the spring. Okay. 
Thank you. Sure. Any questions? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay, so now the fitness center. Um, again, 2024 requests are higher because we do have to make some major improvements. The biggest thing on there is the air conditioner unit. That is for the weight room side. It's not the field house. It is strictly the weight room side. We cannot air condition the field house. It's impossible. Um, so the other is the diamond bright pool. This is the coating on the pool that protects it, that seals it and protects people from getting hurt and also protects it from, con from corrosion. Um, the exercise equipment lease, we, this will be the second time we've entered into a lease. It's lit slightly under the 38,000, but we have that built in there just in case something else happens. Well, how often do you have to diamond bright the pool? Eight to 10 years. Eight to 10 years. Mm -hmm. And they actually were just out because we had it emptied and they told us that it's in really, really good shape. So they may not have to do a full coat. They may be able to just do a half. So they're looking at that right now. But that 45 is for full? It's okay. for full. <clears throat> Any questions? Nope. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. And lastly, tonight we have Jim Roberts from Glen Eagles Golf Maintenance. Um, Glen Eagles, same as Fitness Center, operates as an enterprise fund. Um, historical average of requests for the last five years is around 88,000. And I will let Jim explain what the golf course needs for next year. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, this year, and as Christina pointed out, um, normally we're about 88,000 per year. This year, um, about $23,000 less. We're looking to request one mower this year um, at um, an estimated cost of $65,000. Um, the current mower we have that we would like to replace, this is a T approach mower. It mows those areas on the golf course. It's currently 15 years old. Um, Right now, um, parts are becoming challenging to get and are discontinued. Um, also, the machine currently has um, uh, some mechanical problems going on with it, along with some old technology as well. So what we would like to do is you know, request to go ahead and you know, replace that machine, um, because this current one that we, we have right now, we're putting a lot of time and effort into it. It's 15 years old, and it's starting to affect operations. With the new one, the technology, is there, I think we've talked about in the past, there, the propane versus gas, is there anything right. like this, that? This particular model we're looking at, and that's a great question, um, the technology and the turf industry is really going to another level um, yeah. with some hybrids <laughs> as well. So a lot of things are going with um, basically equipped with engine, but also electronic reels so it's not total motor driven so it's mm -hmm. kind of a partial so um to answer your question it's basically like some of the machine is operating from electrical components to operate even though the engine will drive the machine there's also um computer for the operator as well with a led setup so All right we can set parameters on these pieces of equipment now which is really nice so for example if you or i got on that piece of equipment to, to operate it's going to operate the same because our mechanic can go in that in that um, mechanism, set those parameters for operation speed, um, transport speed, clip ratio, and so the technology is really advanced in the turf industry industry on some of this equipment. So um, this particular machine would offer those um, components as well with the newer technology, and which is nice too. It's going to be better on fuel. Um, with these machines as well. Um, less components for hydraulics and leak points at the golf course. That's our worst enemy when one of these older machines, they you know, get a line that breaks and then we have a hydraulic leak on the golf course. So um, these newer pieces of equipment limits all of those leak points too as well, which is nice one for the environment and two for um, our mechanic mm -hmm. to, to take care of as well. Do you typically try to buy? I, I know there can be variances with what type of cut you're executing, but can you buy any commonality to share components between mowers? We do. Um, so, um, you know, these machines, whether it's a, a greens mower or T mower, some of those components are the same. So for stocking purposes and parts, 
um, we could utilize those parts on different pieces of machinery if it's the same name brand. They try and, a lot of these manufacturers try and come up with that. So just for what you said, we could utilize that, that same parts in our inventory for replacement. Okay. Good. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Any questions? Are there other avenues to purchase a mower? I mean, $65,000 for a mower? Right. And, I mean, and it is, and it's interesting because you know we're, we're not talking about a home lawn or a tractor at Home Depot. Um, these machines are highly technical. We we operate and cut our turf at an eighth of an inch, um, and, and on our T mowers a half of an inch. So um, these particular machines are advanced, and this is what the golf industry has, um, and they're the only machines that are capable of having that type of cut when you're maintaining turf at that low level. Um, as far as your question regarding other options, we've looked in prior years for leasing, just similar to vehicles, but we found, you know, depending on our finances and how we want to, you know, approach things, this would probably be more of a question for Christina. It's it, the payout is more beneficial for us if we can just to pay it off so we don't have to pay out more because the capital um, is coming out of the Glen Eagles fund. At least we try to, unless we have a bad year and have to get subsidized. So my goal is to try and keep costs down as low as, as low as possible. And in doing so, if we purchase the vehicle, I think we're gonna get more longevity out of it as well as we won't have those additional costs on the lease um, by paying interest rates. And we, our mechanic does a great job in-house too. We do all of our repairs in-house with our mechanic over the winter. So right now this machine is 15 years old. Usually the life of these machines are you know, 10 to 12, give or take. So it really far exceeded its useful life. And I think um, by purchasing, we can make the, have the machine last longer. and It'll be a better value for the city and the golf course as opposed to a lease option. Thank you. Questions? Good, thank you. Good. All right, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Do we have any miscellaneous? So I'll just give a brief overview of kind of how I see next meeting going. Um, I'm going to stick to the same um, premise that they've used in previous years with just the sheet, and we'll go through each request. Um, committee members will vote yes or no. Um, I do want to keep in mind, and I did st say this, that uh, we had a staff meeting yesterday, that there are a lot of requests this year, and there's more than what the city and the mayor and his administration would like to support so far. So um, I'd really make it incumbent upon the Capital Improvement Board to think hard and make the, uh, the cuts because otherwise then it, it comes back on the administration to have to make those hard decisions, um, which we have no problem doing, but um, it's just one of those things where if we can cut some of the fat off the top, it makes it easier for everyone. So no other pressure. than that. <laughs> um, and then I guess since this will be my first year of doing this, when you have presented to the Finance Committee in the past, um, how has that operated? Um, I'm a uh -oh. little confused on if it's just I bring your recommendations or if the board would like to present their recommendations. Normally the board has presented in the past. Okay. Um, they would have a big spreadsheet. Okay, and that's what I vote. You know, it's got yes, no, mm -hmm. or whatever. Right? And that's what I will bring yeah. for next week. They would check it off, mm -hmm. which is which. And, and then, then we would just talk to the summary of yeah. what was submitted versus approved. If there were any uh, discussion or dissent, you know, which items were those, and, and okay. any comments. And usually, it's about five to eight minutes. All right. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. We do such an excellent job, they can't ask any questions. So That's can't. usually how it goes, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. John mm -hmm. first. Any second? second it. Shelley seconds. All right. Mr. Blast? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Ms. Price? Yes. Ms. Shipley? Yes. Is adjourned at 6.15.